have not heard of HF1657. Uh, it was just introduced recently uh, as of two days ago, uh, the 25th of February. And this is part of Minnesota, uh, Minnesota legislature. This bill is disgusting. And I'm going to go and poison the well right now. It literally argues in favor of putting trans kids in jail. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding there. And unlike, uh, instead of looking at a news article or anything like that, we're going to look at the damn bill. We're going to look at it directly. Because, like I said, this is gross. So, let's go over it. So, a bill for an act relating to education restricting male student participation in female athletics restricting male access to female changing facilities, and providing criminal penalties, amending Minnesota stat uh, Statutes 2020, Section 121A, and subdivisions therein, be it enacted by the legislature for the, Minnesota, for the state of Minnesota. Now, mind you, this has been posted. From what I understand, this has not passed yet. But... Here it goes. Notwithstanding any other state law to the contrary, in athletic programs operated by educational institutions or public services and designed for participants 12 years or older or in the 7th grade and above, which means these criminal penalties would apply to minors, children. It is not unfair discriminatory practice to restrict membership on an athletic team to participants of one sex whose overall athletic opportunities have been previously limited. Now, this bill is being worded in such a way that it sounds progressive. It sounds like it's trying to argue that, oh, there's a group of people who were previously not able to, to function, not able to, to be taken care of, in the world of athletics. So they want to take care of them now. And it sounds great. It sounds nice. Until you read what it's arguing for. This is turf logic. This is trans-exclusionary radica radical feminist fucking logic. <laughs> Consistent with this section. In no case may male students try out for or participate on a female-only team. A male student who participates on a female-only team is guilty of petty misdemeanor. Now, petty misdemeanor, mind you, can come with a fine of up to $300. You know, for children. Imagine being 12. You're, you're, you're a kid, you might be on puberty blockers, and you're fairly certain at this stage that you definitely are, are, you don't feel comfortable in your body. You've got dysphoria. You feel euphoria when you perform in a feminine way. So you, you want to go and try out, but you don't want to try out for the boys because, of course, this triggers your dysphoria. It's a medical freaking issue. So you decide instead, hey, I'm going to go try out for the group that I'm actually part of. I'm going to try out for the girls team. And then you get hit with a $300 fine. Why? What happens when the child can't pay a $300 fine? When an educational institution or a public service provides athletic teams for children's 11 years or younger in the 6th grade or below, those teams shall be operated without restrictions on the basis of sex. I'm glad that the language of this at least understands that sex and gender are different, but there's nothing given for gender. Only sex. This exists only in the realm of sex. So if you're under 6th grade or below, you don't have an issue. Consistent with the section, in no case may students of the male sex try to participate on a female-only team. A male student who participates on a female-only team is guilty of a petty misdemeanor. Wait, the petty misdemeanor exists for them too? Oh, if, if the educational institution has 
any team restricted to members of that sex, then the the child gets fined three hundred dollars. Then too, even if they're even if they're under eleven, can you imagine being a fucking eight year old? And, and suddenly you're you're being told that your parents are gonna have to cover a three hundred dollar bill for shit like this. When two teams in the same sport are in fact separated or substantially separated according to sex, the two teams shall be provided with substantially equal budgets per participant, equal of gate receipts and other revenues generated by that sport, and in all other respects shall be treated in a substantially equal manner. However, nothing in the section shall be con construed to require the two teams to conduct combined practice sessions or any other combined activities related to athletics. So even in situations where there might be a loophole, like, hey, you might, you'll be able to practice, but you can't play. No, 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 no. Even those do not count. If the two teams are provided in the same sport, one of these teams may be restricted to a member of a sex whose overall athletic opportunities have previously been limited and members of the sex shall be permitted to, to try out the other team. Members of either sex shall be permitted to try out for the other team if the two teams are provided for in the same sport here. Now that's confusing. Does this mean, or nothing in this section shall be construed to require this? So it's not confusing. Never mind, I'm wrong. Notwithstanding the provisions or paragraphs in A, B, and D, any wrestling team may be restricted to members of one sex, whether or not the overall athletic opportunities of that sex have been previously limited. So whether or not... So it's got this progressive bent in it where in some cases it goes, this is okay because uh, there have been previous instances of them having limited opportunities, which is where it's got the, the feminist coded language in there. But it's being terribly misused because... Imagine being a feminist and, and not including trans women. Just imagine that. Try for a second. So, the Rules Commissioner of Education, after consulting with the Commissioner of Human Rights, must uh, promulgate rules in accordance with Chapter 14 to implement this section to prevent discrimination in elementary and secondary school athletic programs. The rules promulgated by the Commissioner pursuant to to this section shall not require athletic competition or tournaments for teams whose members may be restricted to members of a sex whose overall athletic opportunities have been previously limited to be scheduled in conjunction. The saying a lot of the same stuff again. Now, what does what do they specifically name though? In here, they've got an area here for dressing facilities, and they actually have a definition for male. But it's further down. Public school, communal restrooms, locker rooms, dressing rooms, shower rooms, and any other facility or setting where a student may be in a state of undress shall be designated female only or male only. A male who uses a female only facility is guilty of misdemeanor for the purposes of this section. Male meaning a person with a heterogametic sex chromosome pair consisting of one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So fuck you if you've got XXY or Kleinfelters or what have you, I guess. And they're only talking about sex, which means that if somebody identifies differently, which statistically increases the likelihood of you actually getting assaulted, not the other way around, you have to go to the place where you're going to get harmed more often. And oh, by the way, this one isn't a petty misdemeanor. No, 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 no. You read that right. This one is a full-on misdemeanor. Now, this works for all the previously talked about categories, so this works for children. Now, in Minnesota, what happens if you have a regular misdemeanor? 90 days in jail and or a $1,000 fine. 90 days in jail. Now, what the fuck do they plan on doing? Testing the chromosomes of every individual kid? Remember, this isn't grabbing from a news organization. This isn't being sensationalized. This is being read directly from the bill. The effective date? 
would be August 1st, 2021, and it would apply to crimes committed on or after that date. Crimes, mind you. Definitions. For the purpose of this section, male means any person with a heterogametic sex chromosome pair consisting of one X chromosome and one I, uh, Y chromosome. This section applies to the following post-secondary institutions. Institutions that are governed by the Board of Trustees of the Minnesota State Colleges and Universities from the Board of Regents of University of Minnesota. Oh. So this could actually apply even further, like into college. Like after somebody's already had... Uh, <laughs> after somebody's already gone through... They could have gone through gender reassignment surgery. They could have already been on HRT. Nah, fuck them. Fuck all of them, according to this bill. And this has not passed yet. But I have zero expectation of being pleasantly surprised where shit like this is concerned. So, yeah. Remember, if you go into the changing room that you are least likely to be sexually assaulted in as a trans person only only if you're male you know you notice how it never ever 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 talks about trans men it's always trans women always these these bills these arguments that have feminist coded language Previ uh, people previously unable to function, people previously uh, unable to do what they wanted to do, people being underrepresented, those are feminist arguments. They are normally positive. But this bill literally deals only with trans girls, only with trans women, only with them. You know when the hypothetical shit has been talked about where we have what is it we have conversations about shit like this in 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 spaces where trans people are accepted and there's a joke we have what are you gonna do check my chromosomes what are you gonna do check my chromosomes check under my skirt that that kind of shit this bill literally puts the chromosomes as its identifying factor you're literally going to have to find a way for people on a school campus to do a chromosome check. <laughs> and Sable Eagle has it right in the chat. Uh, XXY apparently doesn't count as male for this bill. Neither does uh, 48XXXY or XXYY. But 46XY with a mutated androgen receptor gene, meaning they develop as girls, would count as male for this. So if you have somebody who has a mutated androgen gene, they develop as a, as a girl. They develop breasts. Everything in their body reads female. They're, and their, identify, their identity can even match with it too. Nope. The chromosome police have come by. We found a Y chromosome on you. Looks like you're getting a $300 fine. Oh, you were in a changing room? Sorry, we got to up that to a $1,000 fine or 90 days in jail. Just. And this is considered okay. For some person. This is considered okay for them to, to push. But I, 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 what do you think? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm appalled. I'm, I'm disgusted. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like that I live in a country where this, these are the conversations happening here. Fucking putting trans kids in jail. Fining them hundreds of dollars for existing, for having the audacity to. This is wrong. I think it's wrong. Leave a like if you want to support my work, and I, I apparently need to go take care of Growlithe, so yay. As always, everyone, insert into video tagline here.